when His Holiness Pope Francisco comes to visit us, including an address in this very room. On one shoulder, we have a billionaire out there saying Mexicans are murderers, immigrants come to this country to get on welfare, our best days are behind us, and just getting tough and insulting right, no, people will solve a, okay, all take, of Take our a towel break. Take a towel break. No one said all Mexicans are murderers. You know that. He said that some are, and many of them are getting in and shouldn't be here. And it is true that immigrants abuse the welfare system. That's well known, Gutierrez. You know it very well because you oversee this welfare state in your own district. And, of course, the Pope, as you well know, is now beloved by you because he's a communist. And that's why you love this Pope all of a sudden. If he was a real Pope who upheld real Catholic doctrine, you wouldn't love him so much, would you, Gutierrez? And now we have Cruz, who tried to stop the Iran deal to no effect whatsoever, but he tried. I, I, I mean, I commend him for that. And we have Hillary Clinton in a very interesting soundbite where she admires a man she called Hitler last year. Listen to clip 10. Here's Hillary Clinton on Putin. I don't admire very much about Mr. Putin, but the idea you could stand up and say, I will be your next president, uh, that does have a certain, you know, attraction to it. Um, so, you know, I, I think we've got, we've really, okay, we are not spending. That? It is a certain, you know, attraction to it, meaning a dictatorship she likes now. Okay. Uh, we got Trump, but you've heard him so much, I'm not going to play it. Where's the him attacking Fiorina for looks? I don't even know what she looks like. Can you find that soundbite? They're all attacking him that for saying something about Fiorina's looks. Oh, he didn't say her looks are... are I, what does she look like? I don't even know what she looks like. I know she was a terrible CEO of... I think she ran Hewlett Packard. I'm not sure. I think she did a horrible job. That's all I know. I think she lost money and they fired her. I know, whatever. That to me is more important than, than what she may or may not look like. Let's see. Ben Carson on Trump. Trump attacks Ben Carson's faith. Why would Trump attack Ben Carson's faith? How is that possible? Let me hit clip 13. I didn't hear this one. I want to hear it. All of a sudden, he becomes this great religious figure. I don't think he's a great religious figure. And I saw him yesterday quoting something, and he was quoting on humility, and it looked like he had just memorized it about two minutes before he made the quote. So, you know, go back and look at his views on abortion and see where he stands. You talk about abortion. I mean, go back and look at his views on abortion. Where Now, all of a sudden, he gets on very low-key. I mean, frankly, he looks like he makes Bush look like the Energizer Bunny. <laughs> ben Carson, you look at his face. And I think you're not going to find so much. And you look at his views on abortion, which were horrendous. And that's, I think, why I'm leading with all of the evangelicals. I'm, as you know in your poll, number one, I'm leading Ben Carson by a lot. Mm hmm. So now Trump and Carson are going at each other over faith. Okay, well, I don't see how that's going to play out other than Carson is going to lose. It's going to be Trump 1 or 10 and. Carson zero. I'm so, I'm sorry this happened because I thought Carson and he would have gotten along. I thought Carson would have made a good vice presidential running mate. Remember every time I asked Donald when he was on the show, would you consider a Ben Carson running mate? What he said. I'll be right back on the Savage. Join Nation. the Savage Nation. Call now eight five five four hundred Savage eight five five four hundred seven two eight two Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. The only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. The Savage Nation, uh, we know what the headlines are. Obama orders the U.S. to admit 10,000 Syrian refugees. This is after jamming the Iran deal down our throats, after numerous other insults to our way of government and our way of life this relentless psychotic community organizer now says take 10,000 Syrian refugees he ordered his team to admit them at least 10,000 same time we're getting ready for the Pope to come here people are saying is he really Catholic what does he represent Russian troops already in Syria that we know today the Senate Democrats blocked the move to derail the Iran nuclear sellout Europe's refugee crisis unprecedented in modern history Trump soars a new poll Clinton's email woes that that you forgot that already the email woes they're called email woes in other words she's the poor victim 
That, that's how AP, for Yahoo News, Clinton's email woes. You hear this? It's her, it's poor woman. She's being picked on for getting rid of 30,000 emails, which may have had, let's say, security implications. Denmark closes border to German trains over migrant influx. Hey, good for the Danes. I didn't know they had it in them. They were so busy having marijuana and heroin and ecstasy and sex. How did the Danes get their brains together and suspend rail service to and from Germany to block the uh, the wave, the waves? How did they do that? I, I'm amazing. Uh, the Danes can still do that. We can't. We can't block the trains. Let's see what else is in the news. The latest. Merkel says no legal limit to refugee numbers. I, what happened to her, I don't know. Merkel went insane. I don't know what they got on her. I'd like to see that card deck. Pope will find U.S. church struggling to hold on to Latinos. What? you kidding me. I thought they were all Catholic. Isn't that part of the bill? Isn't that the bill of fair? Where'd this come from? Pope will find U.S. church struggling to hold on to Latinos. What, are they not going to church? You're kidding me. I had no I, I thought everybody was a religious guy. I didn't know that. I thought they were all uh I thought they were Catholics. How do you like that? The Catholic Church? Oh, evangelicals have set up shop here too. Aha. Uh -huh. That's what's going. I get that. Okay. Protestant preacher in the same land. So a lot of them becoming pro Protestant. That's that's my problem. About thirty eight percent of adult Catholics in the US are Latino. Uh Latino. I don't like the word. That, that's a political word. The correct word is Hispanic. 38% of adult Catholics in the U.S. are Hispanic. These numbers are increasing at the same time a steady stream of America's Catholics overall leaving the faith. wonder why Catholics are leaving the faith. Huh. Keep the faith, baby. Immigration and the high birth rate for Hispanic Catholics have more than made up for the losses, helping the 68 million member denomination continue to grow. Yet Hispanics aren't sticking with the church the way they once did. In 2006, about 8 in 10 Hispanics who were raised Catholic stayed in the tradition. The figure dropped to 7 in 10 last year. U.S. Hispanics are joining Pentecostal movements or abandoning organized religion entirely. I had no, this is an interesting story. I had no idea. This is a very interesting story unto itself. No sarcasm intended. So the Pope has a real job on his hand. He's got to do a good, a good selling job, a real bill of goods here. Got a big selling job. I wonder if he's going to do it by talking about melting ice, uh, ice caps. That should really appeal to them. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. <laughs> Every Democratic senator, they are facing a choice. Do you value the safety and security of the United States of America? Do you value standing with our friend and ally, the nation of Israel? Do you value the lives of millions of Americans? Or do you value more party loyalty to the Obama White House? Tell me if you're a Democratic senator how you look a mom in the eyes and say, I voted to lift sanctions on the man who murdered your son when he was defending this nation. But beyond that, when we talk about terrorism, it's worth remembering that if this deal goes through, we know to an absolute certainty, people will die. Americans will die, Israelis will die, Europeans will die. All right, good. Cruz is right. Unelectable, but correct. I stick by my... I saw him yesterday on, on the stage with Trump. Trump was presidential. He wore a suit and tie in the heat. And uh, this guy, he, he did get rid of the jeans, the tight jeans. He decided he wasn't a country and Western singer. Someone re re redressed him, and they dressed Cruz up. I don't know, with the, with the white shirt and no, no jacket. He didn't look presidential to me. He looked like he was an aide that came up to bring Trump a card or a glass or a bottle of water. So I don't understand that one. Well, who's advising him? I don't know. And, you know, I got to say this about Cruz. I know he's a populist amongst the Tea Party people, and God bless the Tea Party people. Some of you like me, some of you don't. Some of you are part of the Rush cartel, which includes the Breitbart cartel, which includes most of talk radio cartel. And I realize I'm the odd man out, but you still listen to me secretly. I, I, I mean, I understand that. Many Tea Party people have listened to me before they listened to them, because I was around before they were. But I don't think Cruz is a very uh, appealing candidate, frankly. I haven't from the beginning. 
has nothing to do with sour grapes. I don't care whether he's on the show or not. It doesn't matter to me. Although I must tell you, I watch him and I don't think he can be elected. You're going to get mad at me if I say why? I've told you a thousand times that presidential politics are to a great extent also about appearance, looks. His looks are not appealing. He has a certain kind of, I'm going to use a, a phrase that's not offensive, I hope. It's hard for me not to. He has a certain kind of weaselly look to him. And his voice is a little too harsh. Now compare him to, to Trump. Do you notice Trump almost never loses his, his composure or his temper? I could never be a candidate myself. I would have blown it from the, from the starting gate. Because I lose my temper very easily. I have a very low boiling point and I blow it. That makes for good talk radio sometimes. Not all the time, by the way. That's the road to, to perdition if you do it on a regular basis. Because if you think that's radio, well, go back to 1994. That's been over a long time. Radio has to have a lot more than just righteous indignation. You know, wears thin after a while. But in politics, people don't happen to like short-tempered individuals. They want sort of a life with father. Father knows best. Sort of a strong, friendly, you know, leader. A Reagan-esque kind of, you know, imagery. Eisenhower comes to mind, if you remember him. I like Ike. Reagan. Re Ike, Reagan. You know, so who, who actually had that since then? I don't know. I... Clinton, why well, there was not, very often Clinton couldn't be made uh, to lose his temper either. He was smart. Cruz, I'm sorry, he blows it. So anyway, here we are. The news is sickening. It gets worse by the <laughs> it gets worse by the day. I'm afraid to wake up in the morning and look at the headlines on the, on the websites. Horrible. We knew this was going to happen. Then you got Frankenstein, Debbie Wasserman and Schultz. How did she ever become the head of the DNC? How did they do this to themselves? How could they elect a mad dog like this to run the Democratic Party? And now they're, they're fighting with Debbie Wasserman and Schultz, who wants no more debates on the Democrat side. They've had no debates. She wants no more. I think there's a limit of six. And they'll be like long after you even remember. No debates. So guys like O'Malley are saying this is not a dictatorship. And this monster, Debbie Wasserman and Schultz, the creature from the Black Lagoon, is running the Democrat Party with an iron boot. Uh, an iron boot, she won't let any debates. And there's a revolt, ruling, and it should be, because, look, the Republicans, as I say, whether you like them or not, at least they're willing to debate. How could you have a party with only one candidate? How can you have a party with a woman as tainted as Hillary Clinton? How in the world can you think that a woman as tainted as that would be presidential material? How? How? In a dictatorship, you can think anything you want. 855-400-7282. We have one open line. Let's take some calls. Let me start with Greg. KSFO online. Greg, what's your topic? Yeah, Dr. Savage, I, I don't understand how we can be supporting Iran and the Russians support Iran and Assad without us being on the same side as Russia. Is it all just for the money or arms? Or you, well, you're raising the, the most germane question of all. Yesterday I reported the Russians have moved heavy weapons, spesnuts, uh, uh, the biggest submarine in the world into Syria, and the U.S. says don't do it. At the same time, we're working with Iran that supports Assad. You're asking a very important question. Which side is Obama really on? Wouldn't that make us allies with uh, with Russia? And, and Yeah, that's right. It would if we knew who was really on which side. We don't know who Obama's playing for. It would be insane. Well, I tell you, maybe he is crazy. Maybe he is nuts. Maybe he doesn't know what he's talking about. Maybe he's just following the maybe he's just following the edicts of special interests on each individual uh, bill, without thinking about the long term strategy. But you're a thousand percent right. Here he is. Obama wants to topple Assad. He's been out to topple Assad for at least three years on record. Now he's supporting Iran and Russia on a nuclear accord with Iran. How is the, how does that make sense when Iran wants Assad to stay in power? Brief. Look, look, th th this is this is hard for the average person to pay attention to politics for the re this reason, because nobody can follow what this man is doing. We all know this. America's interests don't come first. They come last. KSFO, James, what's your topic? Go ahead, please. Yes. Uh, there was a priest in San Francisco who ordered me to stop opposing the communists. This was back in 1968. And I asked him very calmly, ask him why. And he said, because it's the Pope's job to save the church, and the only way he can do that is to join with them. 
I didn't think of it at the time, but I said, well, the Catholic Church says that communism is Satanism. You want to 